Jesus' holy name. If you don't man, mind, stand with me for just one moment as we ask God's blessing. Amen. Dear gracious God, we give you praise and glory and honor for you alone are worthy, Lord. We, we come before you humbly as we know how knowing that we're not worthy to stand in your presence. Only your grace has allowed us to come before you, Father God. And now we come asking again that you continue to bless us in this service. Thank you for the songs that have been sung, Lord, in your glory, the prayer that has been rendered. We, we give you praise for that, Lord. Now I pray that you would anoint me afresh from on high to speak your word, Lord, a relevant word to these are your people, Lord. Don't take it lightly that we stand here behind this sacred death desk. So use us, Lord. Anoint us afresh from on high. Give us preaching power, Lord, that, that ears would be unstopped and hear your word. And Lord, let, let my tongue, let my mouth flow with your words, Lord, uh, that it would reach our spirits and lift us up. Lift up the bow down head and give us a reason to run on and see what the end is going to be. So we give you thanks now, Lord. Uh, you alone are worthy. We bless you. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, give God some praise as you take your seats. Amen. Amen. Going to just talk to you briefly this morning, not going to hold you long at all. Going to talk about um, a topic that kind of came up in, in, our, in our Bible study class. We always delving and, and touching on it. So if you don't mind, we're just going to um, amen talk. We want to talk today about just a minute. I want to talk today about You know, I, I, I bought a new tablet. I thought this was going to be easier to work, and I, Lord have mercy, shouldn't take anything for granted. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor it's good to be here. Ask your neighbor, do you know Jesus? Ask your neighbor, do you know how to work that tablet past the hands? <laughs> Lord to help. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today I want to talk about a topic that uh, we don't talk very much about it in, in, here we go. We don't talk about it much in, in church this day and age, but it's a subject that all of us are very familiar with. Uh, and and uh, I want to talk today about sin. Mm, somebody said, mm, because somebody knows something about sin up in here. Yeah, yes, I said S-I-N, and, and, and don't act like you don't know what I'm getting ready to talk about uh, because we all know a little something about sin. We don't know very much anymore because we've been saved a while, so we, we, we've forgotten all about sin, all the sin we've ever known before. So, uh, but but I, 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 I want to talk about sin this morning. Talk, and the topic, if you want, need to take a topic, it's don't play with sin. Or, or really stop playing with sin. And, and I don't mean to offend anyone or, or question your salvation. Um, I don't want to question your relationship with God by saying that all of us at least knows a little bit about sin, something about sin. We've either been delivered from it, uh, coming out of it, going through it or something, but we know something about sin. I don't mean uh, to, to offend anybody. I'm not trying to put anybody down. There may be some in here that are not saved. I'm not even coming at you all that way. I'm, I'm talking to all of us as a group. And notice I said all of us. I didn't say all of you. I said all of us. Hello, somebody. Yeah, sometimes we stand behind the sacred desk and, and, and act like we've never sinned before, uh, never been down in the muck and the mire. But I'm glad that I, when I was in the muck and the mire, the Lord picked me up out of the muck and the mire. Come on, what the psalmist says, set my feet upon a rock and established my going, then gave me a new song. 
and a new praise. So I, I thank God for that. So I'm not throwing uh, aspersions or, or you know, anything like that upon anybody. I just want to talk um, uh, about uh, uh, um, sin for a while. Um, um, and I just want to, uh, it's all right, because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all right? So let's not act like we don't know anything. Uh, David, King David, you remember him, a man after God's own heart. He even had to confess in the 51st number of Psalm. He said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. So even David, a man who sought after God, wrote the, a lot of the Psalms and, and just panted after God as a heart, as a deer pants after the water brook. Even David broke down and said, my sins, my transgressions are ever before me. And then he asked God to purge me, clean me, wash me of my sin and so but even David just to put him in there uh, helps us realize that somebody that was so after the Lord even every now and then uh, uh, they fall into sin we fall into sin we step into sin uh, amen I, I know we don't all want to say amen but every now and then every now and then and and I, I notice in the in the modern church um, we don't talk about sin very much anymore we 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 really don't hit on sin very much in, in, in a positive way. There is a positive way to talk about it. But we, we want folk to feel good. Uh, you know, get a feel good feeling when you come to church so that you'll come back again. And that's understandable. If I beat you over the head every Sunday with sin, 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 it'll be just me and me up in here. Uh, so, so that only makes sense. So, but, but, but we can't avoid the conversation about sin. Um, when we talk about it, when we do talk about it in church a lot of times, it, it seems like we come at it from a condemning perspective. And as, again, I want to say, don't want to do that at all. But, but understand this right, right from the start of this message, uh, not condemning anybody. Uh, that's not my role at all to condemn anybody. It says that it, it, uh, there's now, therefore now no condemnation to any man that's in Christ. So uh, we can't condemn anybody. I can't condemn anybody. And, 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 and that's not the Christian's role in the first place. Uh, the devil is the one that comes to condemn folk. And he condemns folk when they're in their sin, and he knows he's got them for a minute or two, and, and, and he comes and, and tries to condemn us. But the Holy Spirit comes to convict us. Hello, somebody. I'm trying to lay some groundwork here. The enemy comes to condemn us, but the Holy Spirit comes into our life to convict us or convince us of sin in our life. And when he convinces us of sin, then we ought to repent and, and be restored to fellowship with God. Y'all with me so far? All right. I'd like to say I'm not going to be for you long. And as Christians, we are charged, listen to this, we are charged to edify or build up one another. And, 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 and therefore, thus building up the body of Christ. And that means we are to help our, each other and help ourselves come out of sin. Y'all, we, we miss that. I said we're to help others and ourselves come out of sin. When we see somebody in sin, it's not our job to put them down and talk about them and, and put their name in the street and on YouTube, Facebook, and all that other stuff. No, we're supposed to be helping them out of whatever may have them bound. We're supposed to be agents that set folk loose, not bind, uh, bind up folk or, or hinder them. Y'all with me today? And so, it, this, again, this message is not to, to cause anybody grief or, 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 or feel like I'm throwing off on, on you or particular people. No, I, uh, because the scripture says that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So sin, simply put, is disobedience to the word and will of God. God has a desire for his uh, creation and that's us and we are to follow the the uh, the, the commandments of the Lord which are uh, supposed to be listening to and obeying what he has told us to do and when we go against his desires his will his commandments whatever his word then that means that we have sin okay all right I'm sure most of you know that's 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 Bible study one-on-one 
uh, when we could, when we transgress the word of God, we we we've sinned, and and when we've sinned, then there's a penalty for sin. And the scripture said that uh, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And, and so the penalty for sin is death. But, but Christ came to deliver us not only from the penalty of sin, but from the presence of sin and from the power of sin. He delivered us from the penalty of sin, which is death. He delivered us uh, from that by going to the cross himself to pay the price for all of our sins because we couldn't pay the price for our sin. Yeah, it, 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 we, we just couldn't pay. There was nothing we could do. And, and in the Old Testament, you see them trying to pay off their sins by killing all these animals. And, and, and supposedly that would put them back in good standing with God. But if they sinned again, they had to kill some more animals. And you'll see all through the Old Testament, they were continually slaughtering and sacrificing animals because they kept on sinning. And, and so as much as we want, might want to try, and, and, and we should be trying, <laughs> As, as much as we think we're succeeding and not sinning, the scripture said that we sin by idle deeds and thoughts all the time. And, and, and so we have to be careful. We, we, we can't uh, uh, undo our sin, and Christ was the only one capable and able to pay the price for all of our sins. And in hanging on that cross and dying on the cross, being buried and being resurrected on the third day, he paid the penalty for our sin. Should have got a lot of hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, right there. But, but he paid the penalty. We couldn't pay the price, but Jesus did. But not only did he come to save us from the penalty of sin, came to save us from the presence of sin. That's why he sanctified us or set us apart unto himself. Sanctified means to be consecrated or set apart for special use, and that's the use of the Lord. And so he, he, he uh, saved us from the presence of sin by bringing us unto himself and sanctifying us. You didn't know you were sanctified, did you? Yeah, yeah some, some do, some do. But back in the day, it was a certain denomination that was sanctified. But every born-again believer is sanctified or set apart unto the Lord. Yeah, I'm talking to some sanctified folk up in here today. And, and so he delivered us from the penalty of sin, from the presence of sin, by sanctifying us. But he also delivered us from the power of sin. Yeah, he delivered us from the power of sin. And in, in delivering us from the power of sin, that's when he gave us his precious Holy Ghost, his precious Holy Spirit, to dwell in us. And that's why we can say, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world because we have, we have a, a power over the enemy and therefore we are, we are saved from the power of the enemy. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> we can't do like, uh, what his name, Brother Flip Wilson did. You know, every time he did something wrong or Geraldine, I don't know if it was Brother Flip or Geraldine, um, would do something wrong, he would always say, the devil made me do it. But if you're saved, if you're born again, the devil can't make you do anything. You've, you've got power over your own self, and not only do you have power over your own self, you've got power over the devil. You can tell the devil to get out of your face, Go on back to wherever he came from, and he's got to obey you because we have the authority of Christ in our life. And when Jesus said, devil, get on away from here, he had to leave him because Jesus commanded him to. So, so we've been saved from the penalty of sin by the sacrifice of Christ. We've been saved from the presence of sin because God has sanctified us or separated us, consecrated us unto himself. And we've been saved from the uh, power of sin because we have Holy Spirit resident in us. And greater is he than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you got power in you. You got Holy Ghost power in you. Don't ever let anybody tell you anything different. You have Holy Spirit residing in you. And, and, we, and, and, and so because we, after we've been uh, saved from the penalty, from the presence, from the power of sin, the scripture said that, that now uh, uh, 
we are instructed to live a holy life. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And so he gives us his commandment to live that holy life. So how do we live the holy life? They went through, you talk about they were in the Old Testament and doing all, trying to keep all these commandments and trying to keep the covenant, covenant and the law and everything, and they kept failing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why in the New Testament it became real simple. Instead of 700 or so commandments in the Old Testament that they were trying to follow, there's technically only two commandments that God wants us to really follow. And if we follow those, we'll be batting a thousand. He says, Jesus says, first of all, uh, uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. So love God, love God, love God. Tell your neighbor, love God. And then he said, the second one is like unto the first. That you love your neighbor as yourself. And that satisfies all the, co uh, all the other commandments because if we love our neighbor, first we love God, we're going to obey the commandments. And if we love our neighbor as ourselves, we don't have to worry about us stealing from our neighbor. Come on, somebody. Don't have to worry about coveting what belongs to the neighbor. Don't have to worry about uh, sleeping with the neighbor's wife, committing, y'all not going with me today. Because we love them. And so all those other things would fall in place because we love the Lord. Amen. So, so. Be holy. Tells us to come out from among them. Those that we know are practicing uh, things contrary to the word of God. Come out from among them. Ask us what fellowship does righteousness have with uh, unrighteousness or, or, or the children of God with Belial. We, we, and we don't, shouldn't have any fellowship with them except to share the gospel. Yeah, all, uh, let, me, let me move on. So, so how do we live holy? How do we come out from among them? How do we deal with our sins so that it, they don't overcome us, so that it doesn't become a permanent part of who we are? A permanent part of who we are. How do we unshackle the burden that the enemy has talked us into taking up? Because he can't make us. We can only take it up if we want. So how do we unshackle it? First of all, to get unshackled from our sin, we've got to stop playing with it. Stop taking our sin so lightly. We make light of it. We, we, we need to recognize sin for what it is. Sin is straight up disobedience to God. Now, for those that are saved, thank God, thank God that God is still forgiving. He'll always be a forgiving, magnanimous, loving, caring uh, God and, and always uh, drawing us back to him with his love. Uh, so he's always loving us, always uh, making a way for us to, to uh, repent for our sin and come and reestablish uh, re that relate that uh, fellowship with him. And, but first of all, we've got to stop playing with sin. We've got to call sin what it is in our life. Don't look at your neighbor, look at yourself. Yeah, we've got to stop making light of our sin, recognize our sin for what it is, and, and, and call it by its name. All of us know that, that, that sin can make us feel good. Yeah, there's some, oh, y'all don't have, don't say amen, don't shout me down. But the reason why we commit sin in the first place of selfishness, but because it makes us feel good. Remember Eve standing there looking at the tree of the knowledge of uh, uh, good and evil? Uh, she looked and she saw that it, it was, it was uh, uh, something to make her wise, something to make her feel good or better about herself. And, and so that's why she partook of it. That's why she ate of it. Uh, 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 and, and, and because it was something that was going to benefit her and make her feel better about herself. And then she gave to Adam, and, and I, I'm, I'm still confused on why he ate. We'll talk about when we get there. But I, I know why Eve ate. It says that she saw and saw how it would help her in those three areas of her life. So sin can make us feel good. Sin is very enticing. If it wasn't enticing, we wouldn't do it. 
Yeah, it, it can dress up in nice clothing and look real good. It can stimulate the senses and, and just about blow our mind if we let it. Talking about sin. Don't act like y'all don't know what sin is. It, it will uh, uh, convince us that it's all right this one time. Just, just, just try it. Just try it. Just, just, just once. You ain't. Y'all, y'all, some of y'all, y'all, y'all so saved, y'all don't even want to act like you've been there. Y'all, y'all, we, we, almost all of us have been there, but it'll dress up, look good, smell good, taste good, and just try it. This once. And, 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 and then the lie follows that. It won't cost you. Oh, y'all, y'all act like y'all, y'all, woo. I'm glad I got somebody out there telling the truth. <laughs> and and it, it's, it, oh, it looks good, tastes good, feels good, and don't have to worry about it. It won't cost you a thing. The biggest lie told about sin. Sin is going to cost you something. Uh, I know they used to say that little, a little I, I, I can't remember the saying it. it uh, uh, if you let it ride, it'll take you. Farther than you want to go, y'all know it. I, I don't know, so I'm not even gonna mess with it. So, so uh, when sin, when when somebody comes to offer you some sin, there's a big lie behind it. Just, just know it's a big lie. And and if we want to be honest uh, about this thing called sin, most of the time we walk into sin with our eyes wide open. Somebody, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Somebody else walking the sin with our eyes, plainly knowing what we are doing. Amen, somebody. I'm glad I got an honest church here. And, and, and then, and, oh, okay, oh, okay, I, I used the Flip Wilson thing early. And then we have the nerve enough to say, the devil made me do it. Knowing that we did it because we wanted to do it. If, if it wasn't enticing, we wouldn't want to do it. Amen, somebody. So, yeah, so let, let's, let's be honest. So let, let me make it real plain to you right about now. The devil has no power over you to make you do anything. He has no power over you whatsoever. God has made us uh, 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 free will, moral creatures where, where we can make our own decisions. And whatever decision we make, it's because we wanted to do it. People can pressure us and, and people can entice us, but if we end up doing it, the burden, the fault is on us. Hello, somebody. And so the enemy has no power, no authority over us. You can tell him to get back and you know something? He's got to get back. Come on. You, Jesus told Satan, get thee behind me. He said, get out of my face. And, he, and the devil had to leave him for a season because Jesus commanded him to leave. And we have that same power. So, so what I'm saying is sin is kind of obvious in front. So we need to stop playing games with the enemy. Quit uh, playing with, with, with Satan. Uh, and, and, uh, and in fact, that's why Eve ate. Because uh, the, the, they got, Adam and Eve got the word from God. I know some say, well, Adam got the word, and it doesn't actually say that God spoke to Eve. But God spoke to Eve when she was in Adam. Because when he spoke to Adam, he spoke to Eve. They were one flesh of his flesh, bone of his. So y'all want to get real technical, I can get real spiritual. When he spoke to Adam by himself before Eve was in it, even made, Eve was already in him right here. And so he still spoke to Eve. And so, but, but the thing about it is he said, in the day you eat of that fruit of that tree, you'll, in that day of, you will die. You will surely, you will die. And, and what happened when they stood before that tree and they were looking at it? The serpent slid up next to them, and, and he said, will you surely die if you eat that? And Eve said, oh, yeah, 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 the Lord said it. The day we eat there, oh, we're going to surely die. He said, no, y'all not going to die. You're not going to die. Don't do God just trying to scare you, and he doesn't want you to enjoy that beautiful fruit of that tree and, and become wise. And, the, and, and so because she got in a dialogue with the enemy, he was able to convince her. So what does that tell you? When you know that no good uh, 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 fork tooth, what you call them, Sister Merle, slew foot, 
devil comes up to you, you know who he is when he comes talking things that are not like God. Don't get into a discussion with him. Just leave him alone. Just say no and let that be it. What, what was the campaign a long time? Just say no and move on because you know he's trying to entice you into something. He's been playing that game before Adam, when, uh, since Adam and Eve got here, and so he's pretty good at it by now. So don't even try and match with, some, with him on whether or not it's going to harm you, on whether or not it's good for you, and whether or not it's not going to do anything to you. And this, I, don't even get into those games. He, he knows what you like. He knows how you like it. He knows when you want it. And he knows how to bypass all your defenses. So don't even get into a conversation with it. You thought some of these fellas out in the nightclub were slick on their little rap, on their little talk. They were schooled by the enemy. They were schooled by Satan. But, but he's much better than they are. Hello, somebody. All I'm saying is stop playing with the devil. Tell your neighbor, stop playing. Stop playing. Yeah, stop playing with the devil because playing with sin is his specialty. He will beat you every time. And to be perfectly honest with you, he's not playing at all. He's trying to kill you or kill something in you. Your joy, your peace, your relationship with God, your relationship with others. He's trying to destroy something in your life. So stop playing with the enemy. Stop playing with sin. Satan comes but to, but to kill, steal, and destroy. So stop playing with the enemy and stop playing with those, uh, 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 those things, those familiar sins in your life. That's right. I said stop playing with those familiar, that, that, those things that you're comfortable with. Y'all y'all not going with me now. I, I, I done took a turn. I'm, I'm coming home now. Those sins that we've grown accustomed to. Those sins that, they're not all that bad. Well, they're not all that bad. At least, it's not, at least not as bad as the sins of the person next to me. Don't look over there. Don't look over there. Uh-uh. Don't look over there. They start something up in here. Because our sins are never as bad as theirs are. Uh-huh. Those familiar sins. Those sins that we won't, don't want to let go because they're really not all that bad kind of like the sin of the, the little white lie. It's not that bad because I told it just to, so I wouldn't hurt their feelings. I told it because they didn't need to know my business. It, it was an innocent lie. It was an innocent sin. Yeah, yeah, that's, what, what do you call that, an a, a, a oxymoron or, it, it, it just doesn't fit, an innocent sin. Hello, somebody, I, I, I'm trying to tell you all about these little familiar sins that we have hooked to us that other folk can see and we may not see them. Um, <laughs> the problem is, is that when we get to what we call innocent sins or white lies, what we're doing is rating sin. We're rating our sin because a white lie is not that bad. I mean, sometimes you have to tell a white lie, don't you? I was going to say, I better not have anybody here say, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't tell the truth, don't say anything. Mama always said, if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. Just be quiet. Ooh, how'd I look in this dress, baby? Oh, uh, we, we need to get ready to go to church. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead and tell her she look good. Tell him he look good. Because uh, they do look good to you. That's why you married them. Amen. Anyhow, let's move on. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> 
But the point I'm getting to is that we begin to rate our sins. Some are not as bad as others. We, we rate our pet sins or our familiar sins as not being so bad. Not as bad as everybody else's because everybody else's sin is going to send them to hell. But the Lord understands me, and he knows I'm just hanging on to this because it, it, it's just to pacify me every now I just need it every now and then. It ain't, it's not like something I do all the time. Y y you know what I mean? I, I, I don't do that all the time. Just every now and then, just when the urge moves me, just when the feel, I, 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 I do it. But, 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 but by, by Saturday, I, 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 it's gone so that when I come to church, I can lift up those hands, and I'm cool with God. So it's not all that bad, but we, we rate our sin. But I just want to tell you something, and, and, and I'm saying it real plain. Sin is sin. Y'all y'all looking at my notes. Sin is simply sin. There, there's no rating it and saying there's one sin worse than the other sin because the wages the wages of real bad sin, the wages of most sin is, what does it say? The wages of sin, unqualified sin, is sin. And that helps us realize that sin is sin. Y'all with me today? I'm about through. I'm about to sit down. Y'all getting this pretty good. Y'all learn. So, so uh, sin is sin. Even those familiar sins that we want to hang on to, they're still sin. We cannot rate our sin. I don't know how many of, of you have, have read the book. Um, um, it, it's, a, it's supposed to be a, a play, uh, um, Dante's Inferno, where it speaks of the, the seven the seven rings of hell and the nine, I'm sorry, the nine rings of hell. And as it, he, he goes through the, the poem and uh, it, it's, it's on the banks. You have to cross over a, a body of water to actually get to where hell is. But, but those who aren't all that bad, those who haven't made a decision one way or another on, on whether or not they're going to worship God or, or stay in the world, whether they're going to accept Christ, those are, they're undecided, so they're sitting on the banks of purgatory. They still have a chance. Dead, I'm talking about dead folk now. They've died and gone to purgatory, and they still have a chance because they haven't decided, and, and yet they're dead. And to me, it seemed like the decision was made, but in his poem, they're okay because they still may be able to work their way out of hell, out of this pseudo hell and into heaven. But then when you get down to ring number, uh, the first ring, you're in hell. And those are, I, I, I from one, ring one to three, I think those are the, the minor sins. Uh, from five to seven, those are the uh, kind of a little bit rougher sins. But when you get down to seven, eight, and nine, and especially nine, where Satan is supposed to be, those are the show enough, no good, low down, unspeakable, dirty, back alley. I, what else can I say without cussing? Those are those kind of sins. When, and and so, so what he's done, he's, he's kind of categorized the sins, and the deeper you get in hell, the worse sin that that individual must have committed. And so maybe we get the concept of rating sin from that poem, and that was written in 1400s, 1500s, something like that, but it was a rating system on sin. Let's, to be perfectly clear, disobedience to God is sin. No matter how small, no matter how large, it's sin. Tell your neighbor, sin is sin. Don't try and dress it up and call it by any other name. Sin is, is sin. Don't have a rating system in, in, uh, in hell or even now. He, God says a soul that sinneth, it shall die. And the only way to bypass that death 
and, and is to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I'm not going to qualify and say truly accept him. I'm not going to say really accept him. I'm going to say the only way to bypass hell is to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. God is the only one that knows about qualifying that's truly, really, all that other stuff. If, we, if, if the person next to you has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, in your eyes, they ought to be saved. Hello, somebody, because we love qualifying stuff. Oh, you got to really be saved, you know. If you show enough, say, are you, show, are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? And so that's the way we bypass that, that, that hell thing and all the rating system. We first have to be saved. So first we got to stop judging uh, uh, let me let me back up. And so, get away, get away, getting away from the rating system. We can't judge sin. We just have to judge ourselves. The Bible tells us to judge ourselves, but we're quick at judging somebody else. We're good at looking at the other person's life and seeing what they do, and ooh, just. Just, just rating what they, girl, did you see that? Did you hear about that? This and that. And so we're good at judging everybody else's sin. But we have to realize when we're pointing a finger at them, pointing out their, their sin, we have at least three fingers coming back at us telling us about our sin. And the Bible says don't worry about taking the, that, that splinter out of your neighbor's eye because uh, you're trying to take a splinter out of their eye and you got a great big old two by four or a beam across. Let me back that up because I didn't mean to say you or I. He tells us we shouldn't be looking at taking a splinter out of somebody's eyes. We need to be careful about that beam that may be in our eyes. I didn't mean just put it on you because this, this word cuts to and fro, cuts both ways. It cuts out there and it cuts back at me too. So we have to be careful that we're not judging people on a harsher scale than what we're judging ourselves. Because who are we supposed to be judging anyway? No, we're supposed to judge somebody. We're supposed to judge ourselves. He tells us, judge yourself unless you be judged. And so we're not the judge of anybody else, but we do have to judge what we do, what we say, how we're acting, how we're living. We've got to judge it and make sure it lines up with the Lord. So don't, don't worry about the splinter in your neighbor's eyes. Worry about your own board, our own uh, sins, our own things that are in our life pulling us down. Uh, the Williams brother put it, Williams brother, how they put it? Sweep around your own front door before you come over, jump the fence, come on my property and start sweeping around mine. Sweep around your own front door. Hello, somebody. I wish I could sing that. But anyway, so, so we need to take care of, of the sin that's in our life. Because when we begin to take care of the sin in our life and begin cleaning up our house and sweeping stuff out of our lives and out of our house, what's, what's been hindering us, uh, really if we, if we get down to, first of all, let me back all the way up. If we first of all get on our knees and say, Lord, show me those things that are in my life that are displeasing to you, I believe God will show them to us. And I believe 95% of them we know already. We just haven't unhitched that wagon yet. Wonder why you can't go forth in the Lord. It be, why, wonder why we can't go forth in the Lord sometime. It's because we're pulling a big train load of junk behind us. Even if it's only one car full of junk, it's still too much for us to carry into heaven or carry into ministry. So we've got to check ourselves out. Tell your neighbor, stop playing with sin. Sin is no plaything. Sin will ruin your life. It'll mess you up, turn you around. You could be saved, have sin in your life, and still never get to where God wants you to go. Y'all remember Samson, don't you? Samson was a man that was anointed from, his, uh, from birth. In his mother's womb, uh, the prophet spoke over him how he was to be a, a, a deliverer of his people and not to shave his hair, not to drink any fruit of the vine, not to mess with any dead thing and all that. And Samson played with every one of those things during his life. He ate of the fruit of the vine, played with dead things, played, just lived an immoral life, chasing women and all this other stuff. And, 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 and he he really never got to where he was supposed to be. He was supposed to be a deliverer for his people, but because he had so much sin in his life, and listen to this, he was anointed to do a thing. Anointed, anointed means you have the power of God on you to do a thing. But, but he had so much sin in his life that he, when he, uh, uh, who was the woman? Was it Je Jezebel? Was it, who was it? 
Okay, I, I just making sure we all on the same page. Y'all, y'all know I knew who it was. It was no, I didn't. It wouldn't, but when Delilah uh, uh, ba- said, "Baby, uh, tell me where your strength lies." Come on, baby. Oh, you so, ooh, you so fine. You so strong. Tell me where your strength lies. And and a, a woman tell us that right now. You know we're gonna be doing. Oh, baby, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pumping Lou. I, you know, baby. I, I've been like, but she, she got Sam. She said, Sam, baby, tell me where your strength lies. And he, he told a lie the first time. Put a, put a couple of uh, knitting needles or something in my hair, and I won't have any strength. And, and, and that didn't work. And she asked him again. The second time didn't work. And he finally quit playing with his anointing. No, he stopped. He, he quit. He stopped concealing his anointing. And he exposed himself and said, baby, if I, I've never had my hair cut, if my hair is cut, I'll lose my power. He was playing with sin, knowing that Delilah was a w- woman of ill repute, knowing that she was working for money. He revealed where his secret was in his hair. She called uh, the first barber she could get hold to. He went to sleep. Soon as he went to sleep, she beckoned for him to come in, shaved his joke, his head clean. Shaved his head clean. He jumped up, couldn't break the ropes that were on him anymore, and he was, he was put in captivity because he played with his sin. And also in playing with his sin, he played with his anointing. Come on, somebody. Wonder why we can't get a prayer through sometime? I wonder if we're playing with our anointing, playing with our relationship with God, because we're holding on to sin, not like that. We're holding on to sin like this and asking God for something like that. We got to be careful. God, 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 you can't fool God. You can fool me. You can fool the one next to you. You can fool everybody on this earth, but one thing we cannot do is fool God. And Samson played with what God gave him, and Samson lost what he had. But his anointing, the decree was still on him. When Samson was treading that, that mill down in the basement of where that Colosseum was or where those, uh, the Philistines were having their dinner, his hair began to come back to him. He realized what he had done was wrong, playing with sin. And Samson finally began to pray earnestly. And he said, Lord, give me back my strength. Give me back my anointing so I could do what you called me to do. God had sent him to be a deliverer of his people when he began to pray in earnest. But understand, he lost everything he had because he was playing with sin. But God gave him back his strength. And the scripture said that Samson killed more Philistines in his death than he did in his whole life. In other words, he really began to to fulfill his destiny when he got serious with God. But it took him losing all of his anointing, all of his power, because he was playing with sin. God has called us to do a mighty work here on earth. He's called us to change things, just be change agents, be the light of this world. Wherever we are, it ought to change. It ought to get brighter wherever we are. There ought to be some love, some work, some help, some some great things happening through us together and as individuals. Folk ought to know that we're saved. We don't have to shout it. We don't have to have a bullhorn on the corner saying we're saved. But they ought to be able to tell it by our lifestyle. But if they look at our lifestyle and see that our lifestyle, when the lights go out or when the door is closed or when nobody's looking, is just like their lifestyle, we've just lost every witness we could ever think to have to win them to Christ. Because they're going to say, why should I do what you, uh, uh, try and be like you when you're doing the same thing I'm doing I may as well stay like I am. So we have to be careful. There's an anointing on every child of God. There's a calling on every life of every child of God. And if you've been born again, God has called you to be that shining light that sits on the hill. That, that uh, We're to be reflection of God. We're to be that city. That's what God has called us to do. But when we get into sin and stay there, it begins to dim our lights. And we're not what we're supposed to be. 
because playing with sin will cause our anointing to dissipate. I don't know about you, but I, like to, I love getting a prayer through. I love when God may not answer right away, but I love when I know I'm connected to him and, and, and give that prayer and know he's going to answer it however he wants to answer it, but he's going to answer it best for me. I, I thank God for the power of being connected to him, but we've got to be for real with him too. We've got to be for real with ourselves. So as I take my seat, stop judging other folk. Judge ourselves. Stop looking at other folks' sin and examine ourselves and see whether or not we are in the faith. And I declare, when we get right, it's easy being a right in public. So I got, I got my little uh, first Sunday jacket on right now. I look like a, ooh, a real preacher. That's easy to do on Sunday. But what about when the lights go out in here? And we go out into the world. What light are we shining then? What anointing are we sharing then? Somebody said, I, I, I ain't got no anointing. If you're saved, you have an anointing. But sin hinders the anointing. All I'm saying that if we're going to be as powerful as God wants us to be in design and, and destined for us to be, it's time to quit playing with sin. A whole lot of stuff is sin. Like I said, earlier, I was going, in fact, somebody told me, Pastor, what you ought to do, and this, uh, you, ought, you ought to have some folk come stand up on the stage with, with signs on different, different sins, you know, starting, uh, starting with the worst sin, which is what? Y'all scared to answer. If we were to rate it, we'd, we'd have murder over there. Would, would that be the worst sin? Or blasphemy? Well, blasphemy, that's, blasphemy is the only unpardonable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's a whole nother lesson. I, I'll give it to you in a nutshell. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, is, is a separate sin all by, himself, by itself. All other sins are, can be forgiven except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy is a holy, you know, the Holy Spirit, uh, he, Christ sent Holy Spirit into the world to convict us, to convince us of our sin, uh, to strengthen us, lead us, guide us, and so forth. But, the, but a couple of the main things is to convince us and convict us of our sin. And when he convicts us of our sins, that's when we have a chance to turn to God and say, Lord, forgive me, save me. When we listen to the convicting power of Holy Spirit, I'll be through in just a minute. I know some going to, uh, you're going to get another interpretation from somebody else, but this is the house interpretation when we're, while we're in this house. And so Holy Spirit comes into our life, whether we're sinner or saved. First of all, we all start off as sinner, but he comes into our life to convict us that we need Jesus. All right? And the reason why we need Jesus is because we're a sinner. So that, that's one of the main things he does, convicts us, convinces us that we need Jesus. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, is when we reject that unction of the Holy Spirit telling us that we're sinners on our way to hell and we need Jesus in our life. When we tell Holy Spirit no, well, we, when a person tells Holy Spirit no, and then lives the rest of their life and dies without listening to Holy Spirit, they blasphemed or dishonored the Holy Spirit by saying, you're a liar. I don't need you. Holy Spirit comes and says, you need me. You need me to, uh, uh, to save you, to, to, to uh, point you to God, to receive him. You need me to help. And, and when a person does that, rejects him all of their life and dies, they blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It is appointed on a man once to die and then the judgment. And so that's what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is according to the house interpretation. If somebody else has another interpretation, I'd like to hear it. But that's the only unpardonable sin is to reject Holy Spirit all your life and then pass away. That means you have not received Christ in this lifetime. I know they talk about purgatory. I'm going to tell you what. 
I wasn't about to take no chance on purgatory and end up in a burning hell for eternity. Come on, some. These summers are getting too hot for me, let alone hell. Uh -uh. Didn't make any sense to me. So, 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 and, and so, in other words, I, I'm through with the message. I'm through with the message. So, in other words, all I'm saying is that we need to check ourselves out. Make sure that, that we are in the will of God. If we're not, ask him to shine a spotlight in our life and show us those things that are not of him. And he'll do it. He'll do it. And then we've got to be willing to un, unhitch him, let him go, and say, God, forgive me. Amen. So stop playing with sin. I believe God will bless you abundantly in your life. You'll be going over and not under. You'll be going through. Everything may not be an easy street, flowery bed of ease, but I know the Lord will make a way, and he will hear and answer your prayer when we get sin out of the way. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm going to let you go at this time. Stand to your feet. And especially on a day like this when we honor Christ in, in the receiving of the Lord's Supper, it's important that we... Um, come to him without sin in our life. And so if there's someone here today, someone here today, you may not be saved, kind of laid out the plan of salvation that's allowing Holy Spirit to convict you, convince you that you need Christ in your life. And then the next steps are on, are on us. We either have to accept that salvation by asking Christ to save us or we can reject it. So if you're here today and you've never been born again, you, you don't think you've ever been saved, today is a, the perfect time for you. If you're here and you want to be saved, all you have to do is come to Jesus and say, Lord, here I am. Save me from my sin. Save me from myself. Save me, Lord, and, and I'll worship you all the days of my life. If you're here today and you want to be saved, won't you come? Won't you come? If you want to be saved, won't you